All right, y'all, this is part six, and I'm back. Had to put my good wig on because we got a special guest. Don't want her to see me looking crazy. I'm fucked up in here. Shit, oh, shit, oh, shit. All right, let's get back to it. So I'm like, so what are you saying? But if she can't accept your other kids, then why be in that relationship? You can't abandon them because she won't be happy. She has to grow up and love you and all your kids straight like that. Darius, when you left Dallas, I knew you was going back to her. That's what you do. That's why I say a prayer for you every day because I already know that y'all too crazy. I hope nothing happens to either of you, but you gonna do what you wanna do. So be with her. That's where your heart is, sir. He said, man, what the fuck are you talking about? She said that she can accept it. I just got to tell her it's two and not one. I said, that I'm not tripping over. All I'm saying is just tell her. If she gets mad, well, I don't know. She gonna have to accept the two. That's life. You don't have to tell her. She checks in periodically. Because she wants to make sure that I'm okay and not stressing. She even wanted to know if I had help and whatnot. She'll be cool. Man, we about to lay down. I'm gonna text the fax number when she give me one. When she checked in. Now you worried about when your baby mama hit me up. Yo, we been chit-chatting, but unfortunately, y'all, I don't have the receipts for that, so I'm not going to speak on the conversation because I can't confirm nor deny, and I ain't got time to be going up against some bullshit. I said, if she there, just tell her. If you're going to hide it, fuck all that paperwork shit. It's pointless. Be a man and tell her. Fuck. He told me, yes, I... I said, you know what? Fuck it. It's cool. Hide it. You won't be able to hide it too long. I'm done with this conversation. Whatever happens, happens. You can't pay, then the state will get their money one way or another. I'm done. Peace. Try to compromise. You still hiding shit. You don't have half of eight grand, so it's on you. Later, dude. This is me, I think, in my manipulative tactics. Like, although I want you to tell her, I halfway, low-key, kind of don't want you to tell her. I really just want you to leave her and come back and be with me. Like, let's just be a happy family and go on about our business. That's me, living in my delusion. He said, man, I just said I'm going to give you the fax number. I said, don't worry about it. You ain't got to. Things will stay the way it is. You have two kids and will be paying for two you donated sperm to. I'm done being nice about anything. I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. My niceness has run its course, basically. You good. You don't have to say nothing else. Just tell your mom to be on the lookout for some mail for you, and you'll be fine. He said, yeah, I right. Nigga didn't give no fucks at all. You good, bro? I made my decision already. I'm not going to force you to do anything, Darius. When they ask who the father is, I'll show them a check that you signed. That's their father. Get yourself together for your two little ones, man. That's all I want. Whatever happens, happens. Someone will come along and do your job. Just go get a job and you won't have to worry about anything. I go to the attorney general's office on Monday and I'm just going to sign off on the paperwork. Not really sure when they're going to want the payments to start, though. But since you don't know how to be cordial, I'll tell me should to tell you. Baby, my level of pettiness back in the day was just crazy. Like, I'm going to hit you at every angle. I'm going to have you stressing. I'm going to have you trying to figure out what, what the fuck is my next move. Like, I ain't get no fucks. I was ruthless back in the day. So, quite naturally, he don't respond. He don't respond. He respond when he feel like something is about to just disrupt his life. So, I hit him. You not going to reply? He ain't say nothing. That was October the 8th, y'all. Ten whole days passed by. I hit him up. I'm like, hey. He told me, what's up? I said, did you get everything straight on your end? He said, what are you talking about? I was talking about your job situation, but you seem bothered, so never mind then. I'll stop checking in and let it be. Good luck. He talking about really? All right, y'all. Excuse this black dot right here. They grandmother is there. She has nothing to do with it. God rest her soul. So out of respect, I covered up her face. But anyways, back to the story. So after me and him conversing on Snapchat, you know, going back and forth with the schematics of him being afraid to tell his baby mama that he got other kids on the way and things of the sort, we kind of really just fell off. Like at this point, I got to face it. I have to understand that you with your baby mama, you not going anywhere. I got to face the harsh reality that I'm going to be a single mom to my son. Now, like I said before, I was never having twins. I was just saying that shit because I was being delusional. I was very good at lying back in the day and making motherfuckers believe me. But now, since I done lied so fucking much back in the day, I ain't got no choice but to provide receipts with every fucking thing because I don't want to be deemed a liar, but I also just know how people fucking think. Commercial break real quick. If y'all ain't got the kid on YouTube, I need y'all to go and get me on YouTube. I promise y'all. I ain't in no, no way trying to swindle y'all or nothing. I just feel like there's a lot of people who want to know a lot more and I'm not pushing them out as fast as I could. So if you want to hear more of these stories or hear more about my life and take it all the way back to when I was getting my ass tossed through motherfucking TVs by my first baby daddies, you got to go to my YouTube. Here it is right here. Go subscribe to it. Now let's get back to the story. Me and my baby daddy had stopped talking completely at this point. Like I know for a fact I'm going through this pregnancy by myself. Time rolled around, y'all. I'm living my day-to-day -day life. I'm going to appointments. My mom would dibble and dabble back in just a little bit. But more, more likely than my mom, my godmom was doing a lot of the work. 
Time rolled around, y'all. We getting close. They done told me they gonna induce me on April 16, 2018. He knows. I've been in contact with his mom. I let him know, like, the dates. I let her know the dates to let him. Like, if you come, you come. Sign a birth certificate. Do whatever. At this point, I'm done being bitter. I don't want to argue no more. I don't want to talk about your baby mama no more. At this point, I done brought a life into this world. If you be there, you be there. If not, you not. So, yes, he did confirm that he was going to come, y'all. The day comes, I go to the hospital. I'm sitting there. I'm getting induced. I'm waiting till it's time for me to start pushing. I'm pushing. Baby is born. My godmom is there. She's so excited. My baby, let me get a picture. My baby is born. He's beautiful. And I'm sitting here like, damn, you look like your motherfucking daddy. Now, all the while, they cleaning up my baby, getting us all together and whatnot. I'm texting him, you know, trying to figure out where he at. And ain't no, no stalking, trying to figure out, like, who you with, what you doing. Like, no. Nah. I told you, you said you were going to be here. I'm just trying to confirm. I'm about to get the paperwork signed and go on and send it up. Instead of him reaching out to me, his mom ended up reaching out to me, telling me that Misha had got in the car with him and they was driving to Texas so that he could be there for the witness of his son, right? Okay, you bring your baby mama, that's no problem. The issue arose when they crossed over the state line into Texas and according to his mom, they got to Wascom and they start fighting. She called me, she was like, look, he was trying to get there. He wanted to be a part of it. He wanted to sign the birth certificate. He just wants to be a part of his, his kid's life. Now y'all, I'm not ever going to take that away. One thing about it at the end of the day, this man loves his child. My child, his other two kids, I can never take that away from him. I don't care if he was cheating on me, cheating on a baby mama out there in the street doing some shit he ain't had no business doing. When it came down to them kids, this man was going to step. I just didn't understand the treatment while I was pregnant. I mean, I understood the treatment, but I really didn't. Uh, whatever. Let's get back to the story. So when she tell me that they get into an argument and they fighting, I'm like, shit, what they fighting over? Y'all fighting over me? My delusion kicking in again. Like, oh shit, it's about to be what? A family? It was not. He never made it. He never signed the paperwork. But in the state of Texas, if you put the baby's last name as what it is, boom, bam, it is what it is. Now, remember when I was telling y'all earlier in the story how I was lying about how the whole child support thing worked and the paperwork he needs to fill out in order to save himself? Yeah, well, that took a spin for the worse because after he was born, after you done had your fight with your baby mama trying to get here, you still ain't put forth no effort to get over here and see your child. At this point, it's beyond me, baby. Be a father. Come on. He ain't want to do that. So what did I do? Try to my ass on up there filled out that paperwork, and said I wanted to put him on child support. Now, because he hadn't signed the birth certificate, they did say he was going to have to come and they was going to have to do a paternity swab. Did he do it? Yes, he came. We went to the courthouse, swabbed it all. Paperwork came back in a few weeks. Boom, bam. You're on child support because this is your baby. Now, after him finding out that he was officially being put on child support, he did try to step up. He started coming to get Malachi. He, Malachi would go over there and stay with him, his baby mama, and the other kids. Mason and McKinley fell in love with him. Like, they was just being the family that they needed to be. We had even got to a point where it was easy for us to co-parent. I would bring my child. He would bring my child. We would meet whatever the case was. Baby mama was there. Everything was smooth sailing up until it wasn't. Now, remember when I told y'all I was homeless, right? I took my son to go and stay with his daddy for some time. Like he went, I think he stayed over there like what, maybe a month? It may have been two months straight while I was trying to figure out what I was gonna do. Like I can't sleep in the car with him, Jaylee, and myself. Like it doesn't make sense. So I took my son over there. Everything was cool, calm, and collect. I ended up going to pick my son back up from his daddy's house. I reached out to his mom. His mom was asking me like, how my grandbaby doing? She asked me if he needed anything. I told her I just picked him up from his daddy and that he was cool. I felt like he really enjoyed his time with his son and the fact that his older kids got to bond with their baby brother. All right, fast forward, y'all. I'm homeless sleeping in my car. I don't have nowhere else to turn. My baby daddy done moved to Houston. He out there doing his own thug thizzy with another little bibbity bop that he was with. I'm reaching out to him because look, bruh, I ain't nowhere near where I need to be. I need your help. He didn't respond. Hey, I need your help. Like I'm sleeping in the car with your son. He didn't respond. So what did I do? I reach out to my auntie. My auntie like, bring him here. I got you. You go get your shit together. See you on the next part.